Hello and welcome to a brand new hardware review. Today with something a lot lighter than the Habit keyboard, we have for you a mouse, a gaming mouse called the Moto Speed V30, sent was by the people at Gearbest, that would be the online retailer. It's made by the company called Moto Speed, which uh, was established around 2008 and make all sorts of gaming peripherals, keyboards, mice and all sorts of other stuff. Keep in mind that unlike the, uh, the mouse I reviewed last time, the Genesis uh, native one, this one isn't what you would call a high-end device. It's more of a uh, budget-oriented mouse, uh, so that's why it only costs about $17. But hey, they sent it to me, so I'm gonna review it for you. So uh, stick around and let's see what this thing can actually do. So what actually can you get for 17 bucks from a gaming mouse? Well, it turns out quite a lot. I mean, most mice, most gaming mice, like the basic one you would need to actually play a game properly and uh, have some fun with uh, additional features, comes around, well, at about 12 to 15 Seventeen dollars. Yeah, this is uh, actually what you would call a premium mouse in the the low budget uh, variety because it does come equipped with full RGB lighting all over the place. It's turned off right now because I unplugged the mouse on account of it uh, also having the color green in there and this being a green screen behind me, and uh, it being on would have caused another disaster like the uh, well. If you've seen the, the Habit keyboard review, you may have noticed that from time to time the keyboard became uh, transparent and that would have been from the chroma key. But before we get to the lighting, let's talk a bit about the technology that this mouse is built upon. That would be a PixArt sensor called the PMW3320DBTYDU. That's, that's quite a long name. To make a long story short, it is an entry-level-ish gaming mouse sensor with an optical LED, meaning that it will glow red, so if this were turned on, now it would have probably blinded you and ruined the whole chroma behind me. But it's not turned down, so it's it's okay. This sensor is uh, certified by the developer of the sensor, the Pixar company, as having a DPI or CPI of 3500, a polling rate of 500, and uh, it can accelerate to about 20 Gs. It also has a speed of uh, 80 Ips. Frankly, I really don't have much use for Ips or Gs on a gaming mouse, mostly because I tend to not play... Uh, how should I call it? I don't play... I, I haven't played Quake 3 with uh, 180 FOV in a couple of years, and I doubt I will again soon, and I doubt there are games that are gonna use that kind of uh, setup anytime soon. Uh, popular, I mean. They're probably gonna be most like Counter-Strike, for which uh, this mouse is actually quite okay with. You don't need 70,000 DPI or something to actually play a game. You mostly need around 2,000... Unless you're playing in 4K, then yeah, you would need a uh, bigger resolution. Now, that's all information you could just as well read on the box of the mouse, which is quite truthful about what this mouse can do. What you won't find in this box is, however, any mention that this mouse has software. And uh, I had no idea it had software until someone in the comments of the unboxing video mentioned that yes, this mouse has software, so I looked for it, it's on the developer's website, on the Moto Speed website, and I downloaded it and installed it, and um, how should I put this? The software lies. Like, the software indicates the ability to switch the DPI all the way up to 7000 and give it a polling rate of 1000. That is beyond the spec of the sensor itself. Also, that software doesn't actually work uh, properly, like, it says it has multiple profiles, well, two profiles, that you can use for the configuration of the mouse buttons, but the second one doesn't actually work, and after you change the intensity of the lights once, you can go back to the maximum setting at all. It, it changes from a maximum of 50 to a maximum of 7, though the difference between 50 and 7... I still believe it's kind of there, but I'm not actually sure at this point. It's uh, What I'm getting at is that uh, I don't believe that software was made for this mouse, or if it was, then it's not complete, and uh, while it won't hurt the mouse, you can actually configure the DPI settings, whatever you want them to be like now, not just the standard ones it comes with, uh, it's, it's actually not that uh, vital to have it, so... 
take it or leave it. The, the software isn't really that important for this mouse. Though you will lose the ability to, you know, add macros to these keys, but... I mean, come on, why would you add macros to these keys? There's just two of them, two very, very, very lonely buttons that are spaced one next to each other instead of one on top of each other like every mouse should have. Like, seriously, if you see a mouse with uh, the side buttons that are one on top of each other instead of next to each other, get that mouse because that mouse was made by people to understand how to put buttons like these. Like, these, ma these buttons need to be put one on top of each other for maximum performance. I know because I had them on the best gaming mouse ever made, which was uh, made by a company called Genius uh, about uh, 10, 15 years ago. But I don't have it around anymore because it was sort of destroyed after a decade of, of, of abuse. Now let's talk about what this mouse is made out of. The top portion is all plastic. It's mostly all plastic. It has that coating that gives the sort of smooth, non-stick feeling to it. And it's quite nice. The sides, like here, it doesn't have that non-stick variant and it's just very shiny and... This one will, it will get sticky, it will get dirty, but that's not much of an issue. And it also has these uh, thingamabobs, these pads that are sort of false leatherish, but it's actually, it actually feels a lot more like plastic and it sadly behaves a lot like plastic because these were probably meant to give you more grip. Uh, and not let your hand sweat or something and at first I thought yeah you know that could work sort of like a rubber insert but it, it actually behaves a lot more like shiny plastic meaning that if you have like uh, one drop of oil on your fingers from you know just sweating uh, these things will become very slippery and until you clean them they will remain slippery and actually be detrimental to the use of the mouse I I would have actually preferred if the mouse didn't have this material and just had the same coating it does on the top, it would have actually been better for the mouse, or at least have this coating, I mean, yeah, it's still shiny, but it's easy to clean off and honestly when this thing becomes slippery it's, it has a very bad feeling to it, even worse than the, the shiny plastic would. So yeah, that's, uh, that's not actually a very nice feature. But you know what is nice? The lighting. In standard mode, this mouse will scroll through all the colors of the rainbow in a very, very nice effect. And if you do decide to install that uh, that software that doesn't work all that properly, you can actually customize it to do different effects. And then you'll notice that it has about 12 LEDs in it that can be individually customized to display a different color. Now, software tends to have, be problematic with that, but... Uh, if you do manage to get it set up, you can actually make this mouse look whatever you want it to look like. Uh, maybe not, uh, you know, make complex shapes on it, but you can make it look um, quite pleasant to the eye. Like, it's, it's an RGB lighting that is surprisingly uh, complex and surprisingly well made for a mouse that's only 17 bucks. It kind of makes you wonder, well, why do we have to pay so much money for other mice to have RGB lighting? I mean, this one can do it for 17 bucks. Well, sure, the software isn't all there, but hey, it's uh, it's still uh, an okay system. I don't have an answer for that. I'm just saying that the RGB lighting in this mouse is quite nice. It's not blinding. There is no LEDs next to the middle of the wheel that will just stick into your eye and cause you to not see anything for a couple of days. It's it's a well-made illumination system, and I'm I'm happy with it. It's it's a bit of a show. It won't have any sort of performance influence but it's it's kind of easy to find in the dark because it still glows when you shut off your pc and it, yeah it's a show it's nothing more than a show if you want to brag to your friends that you have rgb in lights in your mouse you can get this mouse and you'll, you'll be happy with it now in terms of gaming performance uh, gotta mention that this is an optical led mouse meaning that uh, it has a visible color i think i mentioned it already so it's more suited for uh, surfaces that are uh, you know, not necessarily even like maybe a cloth uh, mouse pad or something else, something that uh, would uh, be problematic for a laser sensor or laser LED because the sensor is always the same. And uh, in terms of performance in gaming, I've tested it in pretty much every game I had on hand in the past couple of weeks. I tested it in Counter Strike and like Warrior. I tested it in a bunch, a bunch of other games, and it's performed quite well. It even lasted through a couple of hours of uh, Diablo 2 where I just... Uh, in Diablo 2 I have the um, annoying habit of not pressing, not constantly 
keeping uh, a button depressed, uh, pressed to attack. I just spam it constantly, and uh, so far it's worked. The, uh, the the motor speed website and the box itself says that these are Omron switches, and uh, well, they haven't failed so far, and they feel quite nice. I don't have any problems with uh, hitting the edge or something like the Nether Genesis one had, and they they behave quite well. The wheel itself is about as standard as you can get, it doesn't have that, uh, you know, I've seen some mice that have that ability to just uh, scroll once and it'll keep spinning, 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 spinning because it has a, a ball bearing in there, but this one doesn't, it's just a standard scrolling mouse wheel. And, uh, oh yeah, um, the bit it comes a bit as a uh, disappointment, the DPI switch, it's... Uh, you may look at it first inside and, you know, it looks like a uh, like it has two settings, like forward and backwards, but no, it's it's just one button. And it's kind of bit, a bit annoying because uh, it comes right after the bump, that big bump behind the wheel, and it's depressed a bit on the inside, so it may be a bit hard to press, it may be a bit uh, not that convenient. For me it is anyway, because... Uh, I play a lot of Mech Warrior Online and I have mechs that have uh, the Advanced Zoom module and when you enable that, your uh, sensitivity goes out the window basically, it goes insane so you have to turn down the DPI in order to get any actual proper aim. I used to have um, my other mouse uh, just uh, set it to a lower DPI settings when I did that or the Nether Genesis one had uh, a separate button for DPI shifting. Well, I can probably put DPI shifting on one of the keys. It, it is an option in the software, but then I would lose one of these buttons and I actually need them for uh, other functions. And uh, constantly pressing on this one, yeah, it, 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 it's not fast enough. It doesn't feel as handy. It does fit well in my hand. It's not too small, not too big, but it, uh, the button itself isn't... I would prefer it if they put it up here, like right under the wheel, right, right at its bum, not not below it. It's it's not not as ergonomic, not as um, well put there as it could be. As for the rest of the mouse, well, it does have these Teflon pads on the back, which are quite nice. They haven't fallen off yet, and it has a braided cord, which uh, you know it it's gonna chew your furniture or your cat will chew it or something, but it's not really that important. Uh, the basic idea is that if you're looking for a cheap $17 at most, sometimes I've seen it go for as low as $15 on the Gearbest website, it's it's okay. Uh, don't expect anything special from it, it doesn't have customizable weight. The weight is actually okay unless these things on the sides are slippery, then you'll probably drop it from time to time. It's it's a basic mouse and it works and it does have a light shield like you can't deny that this thing looks nice at night in the dark it, it looks nice and it works it's not great it's it won't redefine your world it won't make you fall in love with gaming again it's just an okay mouse it does the job and that'll be it i'll be back soon with a new hardware review next time with a gaming wheel yes a racing wheel the one I unboxed and during the unboxing I dropped the camera a few times. See you then! Thank you for watching this show. If you enjoyed it, please consider watching some of our other videos and maybe sharing them or giving a thumbs up if you feel like it. And if you really, really liked what you saw, please check out our Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you could help us make much better shows and get some rewards in the process. Or you could consider buying my book called Tale of Doom. Volume 1 is out now and available for just two dollars and as always if you thought it was horrible you know where to find me and complain about it